Welcome to today's top tip in Excel. And what we're going to be looking at today is how to use the fill handle. And the fill handle is this little square in the bottom right hand corner of any selection you make. And you'll notice when I hover over it, my cursor goes from a fat plus to a skinny plus. Not the four way arrow, you must get just that skinny plus. If you get the four way arrow, you'll be doing something different. Um, you'll notice also that whatever the selection you only have one fill handle for the selection the exception to that is when you're using the control key to make a non-contiguous selection then you don't have a fill handle but if you have a simple selection you have a fill handle for the selection so what happens if we have a number in here when we drag the fill handle across it does a simple copy of the number that's there. This is the bit most people don't see, is that little box down there for the autofill options. And if you click on it, you do get the option to fill it as a series. In other words, the numbers will increment and increase. If you already have two numbers there with a difference between them, when you fill, it adds on the same difference as there was between those first two numbers. And now in this little box, you do have the option, if you want to, to choose to just copy the cells to just have the same pattern of numbers that you had initially. What about if we have a word or someone's name? When we drag across, it doesn't have anything to increment as a series. So it just copies the cells. If I have a combination of a word and a number, however, it behaves slightly differently. It keeps the word as it is and it increments the number one at a time. This one will actually do something special because when I get to the quarter four, it then reverts to quarter one. When I drag week one across, it does the same. It increments the number part of the week. Now this one doesn't revert to week one when it gets to week 52. Um, because I may be running a project and I may want that project to run from a start date for 150 weeks, in which case I wouldn't be measuring uh, from necessarily weeks of the year. If I have someone's name and a one, yes, you've guessed it, it's going to increment the number part, but not the text part. And again, I can choose to copy exactly what I had there to start with. And this is particularly important if you had a part number that you wanted or somebody's phone number, for example, and you dragged it across. You don't want their phone number to increment. You just wanted to copy. Do make sure you check over here and choose the option to copy. What about if we have some letters or some text followed by numbers and then followed by letters? Well, this doesn't increment the number part. If you want the number part incremented, it must be the furthest right-hand thing in the cell. If the number is surrounded by text, it will not be incremented. And I don't get the option to fill the series there either. What about a date? Well, when I drag a date across, it automatically increments the day part of the date. However, I could choose to say, Let's fill the months in instead. And so now it's left the day part as the 17th, but it's incremented the month part of that. And obviously I could do years as well. Or I could say just copy the days. Um, copy the cells to copy the days. Now, this is an interesting one. Fill weekdays. Because today is a Saturday. It skips tomorrow being a Sunday and it jumps straight in. And what it fills is the weekdays after today. Let's have a look at this one now. So when I drag it across, we would have expected that to go 18, 19, 20, 21, just like the last one did. But the reason this has behaved differently is because in here, there is a date. In here, there is a function which says put in today's date. So as I filled that across, the function itself is filled across. Now the same in this cell here, I have a hard-coded in formula and when I drag that across it copies and fills 
the formula. Yeah. I don't have the option down here for filling it as a series because it's a formula. Now this one here also has a formula in it. When I fill across, it doesn't seem to copy the formula because my formula there refers to those two cells. But what it does is it copies the formula across exactly as it was written. Now the formula there is written using relative references. In other words, what you should be saying when you see that formula is this cell equals the cell to my left and up one plus the cell to my left. That's the formula that's been copied across. So this cell equals the cell to my left and up one plus the cell to my left. So that is a relative reference formula. Here is an absolute reference formula, which means it's talking about that cell there and always that cell, plus that cell there, which is always that cell. So now when I fill them across, this one is also referring to the same two cells. Let's have a look at days of the week. When I drag days of the week across, yes, you've guessed it, it fills in the days of the week. And I do get the option to revert to just all Mondays, um, or to fill the series. Another interesting one is I get the option to fill just the weekdays. So rather than filling the days, I could fill the weekdays, which would skip over any weekends if I kept dragging. If I have an abbreviation of Monday, yes, it does that abbreviation just the same. January, well, that works the same, fills in the months, and the abbreviation of January does the same. And of course, I get the option here to copy or to fill just the months if I want to revert back to it. Now, the reason these work is because there are lists saved inside Excel for the days of the week. Now these lists are saved under File, Options, Advanced, and if you scroll right down to the bottom on the Advanced tab, you'll see where it says Edit Custom Lists, and in here I have my Monday, Tuesday, my Mum, Tu, and so on. But what I can do is I can put in a new list, and if you just read down here it says press Enter to separate the list entries, or to import a list from cells. So if you already have a list on your screen, you can use that list. I'm going to type in Bill, Joe, Fred and click on Add. You'll notice I now have Bill, Joe and Fred as my list. I'm going to click OK and OK again. I'm now going to drag Bill across and it now says Bill, Joe, Fred, Bill, Joe, Fred. I do get the choice again to copy the cells to make them all Bill or to fill the series, which will go in sequence as I type them. And as with all of these series, I can drag them not just horizontally, but vertically, and I can drag them backwards as well, if I so desire. Let's see what happens when I do that one again. This one now has some formatting applied to it, and so it has actually applied the formatting as well as the series. When I come over here, I get the option to just have them all as Bill, or to have the series, or to have just the formatting. In other words, I've just used it like the format painter up here, and simply painted across the formats, and if I manually type something in here, it will take on the format that was copied from here. Um, the other option, let me just clear that, the other option is to fill without the formatting. In other words, it copies the data in the sequence of the list, but not any formatting. So the formatting stays the same as it was. Now one other thing that I'd like to show you with using the fill handle, in here we have a formula, which is the cell 2 to my left plus the cell 1 to my left. Um, what a lot of people like to do with filling down the formula is they take this and they drag it down. Now that's all well and good unless you've got loads and loads of data. Actually, what you should be doing is, let me just delete all of that, what you should be doing is taking that cell 
going over the fill handle and simply double clicking and that will fill right down to the bottom of the data wherever that data is which is very useful if you're filling long lists um, also useful for moving around in your data are the keyboard shortcuts from the very bottom of the data there I simply used control and the up arrow to get back to the top of the data okay that's your top tip for the day I hope it's been useful and thank you for listening